Good afternoon and welcome to ANM News. And today we have, we are deliberating on a very, very interesting topic. This is a topic which is international ramification. We, I have with me the Council General of China and one of the top diplomats from China live here. Welcome to ANM News, Mr. Charlie Yu. I have, you are very, very lucky to have you here and I really thank you for talking to us and talking to our viewers on a very sultry, hot day. Okay, <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Ajit. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you back to my uh, little residence. <laughs> I will be pleased to um, talk to our friends in East India and I'm Absolutely. open to any questions. Absolutely. The first thing that, I, that comes to my mind is that when we spoke last, when there were a whole lot of uh, business uh, and trade and commerce between the two countries in the pipeline, and you had mentioned about uh, basically one success story at that point of time that you had mentioned was the Titagor uh, wagon factory and its collaboration with, uh, I think, CRRC of China. So if you can just elaborate a little bit more on that. And what are the progress that have made? What exactly is, how has been the collaboration? Uh, okay, uh, uh, CRC is an interesting story. Uh, personally, uh, I, I'm not in, uh, involved in, in their business decisions. Uh, this may start from um, uh, their participation in BGBS 2022 last year. Uh, they are uh, the participant of that conference hosted by West Bengal government and they are invited by the West Bengal government. My office uh, did some service to them providing you know uh, the basic environment situation, uh, basic information about Chinese businesses in India so they decided actually uh, while we were having the uh, conference they announced that they, they were entering a cooperation with the Titaka. So we congratulate uh, them for the, uh, this lovely story between actually a West Bengal based manufacturer of major major vehicles, uh, uh, rolling stocks and a major name of a uh, Chinese manufacturer. Um, the, I attended the 25 years anniversary of Titaka Wagon, where the Honorable Chief Minister was there, and many other uh, business leaders, and senior bureaucrats, and politicians in West Bengal were also there too. So I witnessed that uh, grand uh, celebration. I feel very pleased that uh, CRC uh, is able to work with West Bengal, showing uh, the, uh, the good environment here. So what exactly is the collaboration? What is CRC's role and what is Titagon Wagon Factory's role? Well, technically I cannot uh, you know, explain uh, in details uh, about how they do. The, the basic thing is that they, um, CRC uh, working with the Chitaga is going to provide coaches for metro system in Bangalore. So they have signed the, uh, the, the agreement that is their business de decision and according to, uh, as far as I know, because my knowledge is limited, it's their business, um, as far as I know they um, uh, they, they, their operation, their real manufacturing will start later this year. That's, that's what I know. Yeah. Is CRC venturing into any other collaborations or do I looking out at anything else in Eastern India? That I, I do believe that CRC India, uh, so the CRC entering uh, cooperation with the Titaga is CRC India. Okay. So they, I'm sure, to, f to facilitate the tremendous need for infra infrastructure development. CRC is a very good uh, supplier, very reliable supply. I'm sure many of the metropolitan cities in, in, in India, uh, they, uh, they would love to reach out to CRC. Well, there was talks going around that you were interested in North Bengal, and that's a very virgin territory, and then many 
uh, industries, uh, they want to uh, set up factories or uh, infrastructure in North Bengal. So, is there been any development on that front? No, uh, my portfolio covers only five states. West Bengal, Bihar, no, Ch- Chhattisgarh. I'm talking Jalpaiguri and Shiliguri and all those areas, North Bengal. Well, th- that, that, is a, that is a tremendous uh, area that, uh, you know, where infrastructure development in, uh, lies entirely within the, the, the government being there, the government of West Bengal. And my, uh, I have been here for the last four years. So uh, my view is that um, com- Chinese companies in West Bengal, like CRC, like uh, China Dongfang Electrics, and China New Hope, etc., China, Co-China, etc. These are the big names from China, even they are the big names in, in the world. So the, if there's any need arising from our state, from other states, from India, uh, we would love to facilitate. Has yeah. there been any proposal of such uh, which has come to your office or you're looking at any kind of proposals in that format? Of specifically uh, proposals, uh, I have not seen any specific proposals, but I feel that after talking, you know, over the last years, both uh, during the pandemic and uh, post-pandemic, business communities, government, not only West Bengal, but other governments too, state governments too, they, uh, their need, their interest is very strong. So well, I, I just wish that um, uh, we have very good, you know, um, momentum, emerging momentum. And uh, as Chinese Council General, uh, we would dedicate and use all kind of available resources to help our business communities to connect with China. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Kunmin is a sister city of Kolkata, and mm-hmm. recently you had this uh, regional uh, forum meeting there uh-huh. in, in Kunmin. Uh-huh. So, with Indonesia was there. So, are you planning any, anything of the sort in India in here, or is how, what is that forum, and how uh, do you incorporate that uh, in, in, in future strategy? Um, well, you, you uh, ask a very good question about how. Uh, Chinese province can initiate to cooperate with any Indian states or the other way uh, to put it the other way is how uh, we Indian states especially in East India look at the potential of cooperation with any Chinese uh, provinces I have um, maybe friends from East India have read or heard about the two sessions of China, the, the latest National People's Congress and the latest Chinese Political Consultative Committee. Normally we, we say it's two sessions. It's, it's one legislation, uh, legislative sessions in China that looks like very much like the Lok Sabha session in China. So this past March, uh, this year's legislative session concluded and promoting, advocating and promoting the Chinese modernization processes. A modernization in a huge country, modernization of, you know, peace for development, modernization of, uh, you know, nature and human, modernization of uh, all kind of, basically what I mean is that how we, the business communities in East India, see the potentials and opportunities in the Chinese modernization process. That is, let's analyze them, put them, put this Chinese organization uh, processes into real business opportunities. So back to Yunnan province, there's um, earlier this year, Yunnan organized uh, the first post-pandemic China South Asia Forum and Expo. So there are many Southern Asian countries and organizations. This South, uh, China South Asian Forum is what for, what kind of forum? This is for development. It's a, it, it's more it, it's kind of 
uh, it's similar to BGBS. That is, business leaders, politicians, senior bureaucrats, not only from China, but also from other countries, because it's a, Yunnan is the host. Yunnan has been a designated host representing China for the last few years. So it's uh, the first post-pandemic in-person, offline forum. They invited, uh, they invited uh, many representatives from South Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries. So, uh, Did India take part? Yeah, uh, I don't know other people, but I know that uh, BCC and I, uh, but President, Chim this Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, President for this year, okay. was invited to the forum. And the, maybe the good part of, of it, back to the cooperation, the opportunities. So participating in the event is one occasion to show the interest from West Bengal. This is one. But the other one is more concrete. Um, my office facilitated uh, a BCCNI business Chinese training program online for them. I facilitated them this course taught online. My office invited one um, certified Chinese language professor from Yunnan, teaching them online. This happened uh, late, uh, late, mm, I think mid last year, lasting 60 hours. 15, in 15 weeks. So my office distributed the certificate for tw 21 trainees from India. These 20, 21 people were all from the member companies of uh, BCCNI. That shows the companies have the interest to learn Chinese. Graduating from the program they have the Chinese language skills that can boost their business. It's very simple. So the good thing is, after graduating from the program, BCCI noticed that this is a good one. We want to have another one. So there's another one still going on okay. as of now. It is still going on. It's another, I think, 60 hours and the same teacher teaching the same course, maybe higher level, okay. to them. Okay. So uh, this is a very, very vivid example, very vivid example to show how the interest of West Bengal can be integrated and combined with the capability of Yunnan province. The vice versa is the same. That is, what is the capability of West Bengal? you have a very strong need to sell your products. Like uh, mango, I, I told friends many times, uh, when uh, Bengali mango, Indian mango, especially from the uh, east part of India, if we have the flight, we may have great potential to sell online by e-shopping, by e-commerce. And uh, we have a huge uh, you know, talents, troop of talents that, for example, the education destination. Chinese universities in Yunnan, for example, in terms of medical degrees, there are many kids who, uh, who can afford such training program. It's good. People can choose to go to the US, go to Russia, go to Ukraine, go to, go to UK, any countries for medical degrees. And China is one of the very uh, cost-effective and high-quality destination. Yunnan happens to be one of such places that is close to you, cost-effective and quality is high. So, um, so you're looking at education and trade like mangoes and which ones? Yeah, specific com commodities. A, yes. And also the training and education, education resources in China. It lies everywhere in, our, in the corner of our communities. So what, what I mean is that um, with you know, everything coming back, I'm quite confident that um, if we meet more often, 
to talk about the really need. I mean, there is a word called need analysis. Let's sit down and talk about what are the needs from both sides. So BCC and I participating in forum of Yunnan province. My office coordinating Chinese company taking part in BGBS. This is mutually beneficial. And CRC Tiraga Corporation happens to be one of the pro one of the relationship after BGBS, meaning that we do produce fruits. These fruits are tangible, visible. It's just over there, and also it's not that hard. Following that regional meeting, regional forum meeting in Kunming, mm -hmm. do you foresee any such uh, collaborations in near future? Are there any such kind of collaborations on the pipeline? You know, we are government. The business communities, they, uh, some of the people um, I have talked to, uh, they are traveling to China now. They are either in China or they are on their way to China. I don't know where they go. We only give them visas. One or two, maybe three, four of them, I know that they will be landing in Chinese Guangzhou city, in Shenzhen, in Shanghai. Uh, they are building on their uh, past success, success because this is their first post-pandemic visit to China. People are waiting to go there to renew their business relationship. Can you name these four companies? No, I, ca I cannot name these companies. It's their business. Okay. They go to China to buy or they go to China to renew their, um, you know, business deals. And, uh, well, I can tell you, I, I visited um, a Texmarco two days ago. Texmarco, another major manufacturer of uh, uh, railway equipments and cabins. They have massive number of wheels and axes uh, bought from China. They were just there on, on their workshop. What I mean is that still back to the, to the word complementarity. We are the two countries that have strong needs and uh, the, 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 uh, the real situation of complementarity. We produce what you need, you have what we need, and we can really work together. So I anticipate uh, as long as um, as I said that in China, for example, there are many, uh, just like Bombay, Kolkata, Delhi, ongoing uh, expos, investment fairs, uh, everywhere in China. I, I do uh, welcome the business communities in India, especially in India, East India, can visit Chinese uh, places. My office will certainly um, uh, be very pleased to invite any Chinese delegation to visit West Bengal, to visit uh, uh, the states in East India, to facilitate the exchange. Absolutely. Lastly, I wanted to know if, uh, what are your future programs? Currently, what are you working on in the future? And do you have any such pro uh, projects, collaborative projects in mind, which you feel that people coming from China, coming to Kolkata, or maybe coming to the Eastern side, there can be, can, there can be some kind of development which will concretize. Well, let's, uh, you, uh, your question is, is wonderful. Let's, let's um, uh, start with uh, Duga Puja. Okay, Duga Puja is a UNESCO heritage and uh, people love it. And uh, Impact and my office, we worked on this um, twice. One is the first 29, 2019, uh, for that one, the top uh, pandos visit China at my invitation. That is one thing. We didn't do this during the, the last year because of still the, the restriction not lifted yet. So I just wish that this coming Duga Puja in, in October, September this year, we can, we can do this because the successful experiences are just over there. We just copy, we just follow what we have uh, done. This is one thing. The other thing is, okay, um, I have traveled extensively in East India. Uh, 
some of the places are beyond my portfolio, but I, I feel, I tend to believe that, okay, just like um, uh, the traditional Indian rituals, your professionals, your, your gurus, your pandits are the top expertise in this country that can be shared with China. The only thing is that we sit together and talk how that can be shared, that we need to create a good platform for them to share. And uh, I visited um, some tea gardens in Darjeeling, in Assam. I stayed, even stayed in their bungalows. You know, Indian tea estate is managed so professionally so known to many of you in the neighborhood, but I can tell you it's not much known to Chinese. Chinese tea gardens, normally they are the same villages in the same commu community grow their own tea. But here in Darjeeling, in Assam, tea estates are huge, managed like real companies. Such experiences, my view is that such experiences as modern day management experiences and practices by India. This needs to be shared with the Chinese professionals, with the Chinese, you know, community leaders. Uh, this is tea, uh, not mentioning the culture. Sports, you know, sports. I know uh, we Bengali people, especially in Kolkata, we are football fans. And uh, the uh, Indian cricket, and I told, um, I asked many friends here in Kolkata, do they know that uh, Yunnan province has some of the world's top quality sports training facilities? None of them know this. But I can tell you that Yunnan province is a worldwide known top venue for sports training. So just my office is open to any initiative, any proposal to my office that if young athletes, you know, wish to, tr to be trained somewhere, you can be trained in Dubai, you can be trained in Bangkok, you can be trained in the US, in the UK, in Europe, in Russia, in China too. And the advantage of Chinese training facility is that they are, you know, China is one of the top sports power in the world, winter games, summer games, uh, all so you kind open of... up your training facilities for yeah, anybody who Yeah, yeah, first... yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's over there yes. and make use of them to increase, you know, especially young people, they represent our next generation leaders. And I like to see our young boys and girls strong. And I would welcome initiatives, ideas, and uh, requests I, I can facilitate. So sports is one, sports together with the young people. And uh, film, you know, um, I can tell you that um, Chinese people know uh, Bollywood more than anything else. But I told them, I told all the time, told my uh, friends from China that uh, Bollywood is not all. We have Tollywood, <laughs> we have Kollywood, right? So Bengali film, because we are talking about the film from here, from, from Kolkata. So Bengali film is one of the um, industry or the art or the, uh, the real people, the actresses, actresses, directors and the conductors. These are the, you know, people and things that can be shared with the China in a more effective way. By, by more effective, I mean that we are here, but we have not talked much here. But in my perspective, my office would love to facilitate any such initiatives to strengthen the film industry and art exchange between our two countries. Uh, maybe uh, last but not least, I can, I can go on and on the list. <laughs> uh, the um, women women and uh, poverty reduction. So these are not the specific, you know, any, it's not easy to explain. So women status improvement in India and China, we are following different path, but the, eventually the result is the same. 
or is being seen is the same. I'm, I'm very glad to see the, uh, the Indian, uh, the, the, the women status in India has been tremendously um, in, in, in improved. And in China too. China, the, for example, the health care for women and children, we are the top 10 performing countries by United Nations standard. Chinese women achievement is so big. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's equally exceptional than Indians. So but these are the areas we, we, can, we can talk more on this. And fighting poverty is part of the nation building. It's part of the leadership of our countries. And I'm, I, I do believe that, you know, India and China, we have so much in common, but we have not talked enough. So my, my office would be pleased to, uh, to facilitate such exchange. Such exchanges. Yeah. Lastly, as one of the very senior and top diplomats, do you see the relationship between India and China improving more in times to come? I, I do believe. Uh, I, you know, I, I, have, I have lived in uh, uh, India in general, in Kolkata in particular, for the last four years and two months. I have felt the warmth from the community. I have felt the generosity given to, to me, to my office, by uh, bureaucrats, politicians, businesses, educationists, people from Delhi, people from Bhubaneswar, people from Ranchi, from Bihar. I feel so warm. And I do believe the momentum is picking up. And I do believe that with concern, as I said, I have covered so many specific items. These items are the anchor of our achievement. And we have achieved so much, but we don't, we have not shared it as much. If we share as much, just as we are talking just now, I do believe I do believe, I'm very optimistic that a healthy and steady relationship uh, is emerging and it's in the best interest of our two great nations. Yeah. Absolutely. So the momentum is picking up and we are definitely moving forward. That is what top diplomat from China, very, very senior person, been here for the last four and a half years, Mr. Charlie Yu just told us. Thank you very much for speaking to ANM News. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chai Liu and we'll definitely come back to you in more uh, with more uh, interviews and more information in near future to get more as it, as it develops here, as the relationship develops and things develop here in this part of the country. Yeah, actually, uh, after I can promise you and other friends from West Bengal that uh, uh, I'm open to any questions and uh, come to us anytime. Uh, I have this small uh, residence. This, you know, this long is good. And also, I want to take this opportunity to say uh, to thank all my friends in in Kolkata and elsewhere in East India for the hospitality so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching ANM News, and we'll come back with more such very interesting interviews in the future. Keep watching ANM. आरु खबरेर अपडेट पे दे सब्सक्राइब करों आमदर यूट्यूब चैनल टी आर बेल आइकन ए क्लिक करों नोटिफिकेशन्स पे दे